Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and I want to get a huge shout out to everyone out there. Um, I had a video go absolutely insane this weekend, and I just want to thank all of the new subscribers to the channel for coming to check out my content. I hope you guys enjoy the future content I bring to you guys and spread the word. But honestly, I am kind of uh, beside myself with the support, the subscriber growth, growth and everything this weekend. We broke 10,000 subscribers. I hadn't even figured out what I was going to do for that yet, but I guess I'm going to have to figure that one out. So again, still thank you guys so, so much. The support is awesome. Keep that coming. And I guess I got to figure out what I'm going to do for 10,000 subs. But you guys came here for a weekly reset. So gushing moment aside, thank you, thank you. Um, that was amazing this weekend. You guys blew me away. Um, weekly reset. So first off, we'll start with the good old Flashpoint. It will be on IO. So you can go, uh, you know, poke fun at Asher Mir for a little while. You also have a heroic adventure to do as well. So jump in there, get a little bit of powerful gear from that. You've got your standard Vanguard pieces here. Uh, your modifiers for the week are going to be Void all week long. So that's not going to change whether it's Heroic Adventure, Strike, Story Mission. Those are always going to have Void all week long. And then nice thing is it's a triple heavyweight week. So Tuesday, Friday, and Monday are all going to have that heavyweight modifier. So you got three days uh, definitely to jump in there and have a whole lot of fun with some heavy weapons. Um, edge Transit, I, I'm sure none of you have one of those yet, but if perhaps you do have an Edge Transit, you know, you might bring that one along, get some nice grenade damage with your heavyweight explosions there. But, you know, it is a hard gun to come across, so if you got one of those, maybe just bring that one along. Your strikes for the week are going to be as follows. We've got Combustion. Now, these may change as you go through the week. Sometimes I feel like these do rotate, but at least for this week, we've got Combustion. So Hawthorne's waiting on the cliffs above the salt mines. That's pretty early on, actually. Looped. Uh, no one's heard from Cade 6. This is where he's actually tucking the little time thing. We've got the gateway. So Osiris damaged the ghost on Mercury. Kind of jumping into there for the first time. Deep storage. This is going to be search the pyramid in Io for the infinite forest. This one's actually not bad. It might be like mission 3. So nothing too crazy. And then off-world recovery. You need, to dress, you need something to draw at Zol. So you head to the EDZ. It's a pretty quick, easy mission. All these should be pretty easy. Um, my recommendations probably for speed. Combustion isn't too bad if you actually go through the salt mines. Looped is always a fun one. Just a little throwback to Cade because we don't have him anymore. And off-world recovery is probably actually pretty quick. For our nightfalls for the week, your options are going to be the corrupted. So I guess we'll have to see what the uh, nightfall exotic piece of gear is going to be for that. You have the inverted spire. Always a pretty good one. If you've got a group, set your card up basically as I have mine. You can do whatever sins you think is going to work best. Heavyweight modifier, and that's it. Now, if you want to go through and just do a nightfall, if you guys are getting to be 530, it may take you some time. But with heavyweight, you can melt some of these bosses so quickly, especially with a group. Somebody throw down an empowering rift. Somebody throw up a rallying barricade. Somebody go knee him in the face with molten. Uh, what am I thinking of? That titan thing I'm blanking completely on right now where you basically set them on fire. Do all of those three things together, they will absolutely melt. Now, you may not be able to kill it before the first phase, but honestly, they go down really fast. Strange Train, where you fight Nocris, is probably one of the harder ones just because you do have those immune phases. So if you are looking for probably the easiest one, I would say, is the Inverted Spire, just because you have the big um, Vex Minotaur at the end, and it goes through the three levels. And as you go down in those levels, you can dump so much damage in the first phase and second phase. I've actually had him die on the first and the second where you don't have to do anything in the third phase. So my recommendation, Inverted Spire, I'm not entirely sure what Singe I would recommend in there just because I know you've got a little bit of everything. Um, maybe Void, actually, but I'm not still entirely sure, so I'll have to think about that one. Um, but yeah, Inverted Spire I think would probably be the easiest if you are struggling to do a Nightfall. I'm definitely not at the 100,000 point score yet. That I will leave to others until I'm a higher level. Uh, it is daily reset is back to Gambit now. So work on your Gambit score. I'm actually getting ready to crack 5,000. Get me a piece of gear. FYI, every time you go from like Heroic Rank 3 into a completely new name, like if it's a Heroic, then go to Fabled or Fabled to Legend or whatever the order is, I forget. But when you go from like 1, 2, 3 and then you go to a new 1, you do get a piece of gear from that. So keep that in mind. Leveling this thing up does have its purpose. Uh, but Gambit is in there, and it does sound like, shout out to both Houndish, Unknown Player, uh, a couple of those guys out there, uh, and also Paul Tassi on Twitter. The dude writes some awesome articles. Check him out. It seems like the Malfeasance has started to drop. I don't know if the whole thing's available, 
but there's a chance for a funky boss to be your primeval. And if you kill that thing, it sounds like it has a chance to drop a beast to start the Malfeasance Hand Cannon quest. So get your button gambit. Seems like things have opened up. I don't know if it ties into week three of the Dreaming City or not, but we'll get to that a bit later. Crucible. We have something brand new. Still have your weekly challenge. That's normal. But we have Breakthrough. This is your deploy the breaker to expose the opponent's vault, then hack their vault to plunder it. So basically, there's two objectives to this. There's a middle objective, which one team has to win over for the round. Once you have that one over, that is set. Then you have to invade their, you have to like hack their vault, basically. So you kind of take the middle and then you hack the vault. I don't know if it's a time thing. I don't know if you have to carry something from one piece to the other. Um, but it is a double objective. So say you lose the middle part, you still can win the round. Potentially, I'm guessing, if time runs out, but you defend it long enough. I don't know if you get a buff. I don't know too much about this mode yet, but... It is going to go into competitive after this week, so if you want to enjoy it with a normal group of people, not the sweatiness over here in competitive, I would jump in and try it this week. Because, honestly, I kind of wish they would throw it into quick play just as a variety of things, because we just literally have clash and control. Some other objective mode would be cool, but maybe later if we wish. But honestly, jump in here, try it this week. If you're going to do your Crucible matches, you may as well see how the you know, how the game type goes, if you like it or not, and then, you know, send a tweet to Bungie or any of those community guys out there, Cosmo, um, Dylan, Deej, any of those guys, let them know if you like it, if you want to see it in quick play, anything like that. And if you do play it, let me know in the comments. I'm actually curious your thoughts. I have not jumped into it at all yet. Uh, so Tangled Shore will be your standard stuff. I will get you guys the uh, bounty there in just a little bit. And then I'll also travel to the Dreaming City, but let us check out what the vendors at the Traveler have first. Alright, Guardians, so first we'll check the Prismatic Matrix. Remember, three is your max, so if you have three, spend one, so you can keep getting one. It's just a checklist, so the only exotics is the one I'll go over. You got the All Mine Ornament, which I just got randomly. Just collect all your Glimmer and hold on to it in glory. And you've also got the Sneak Attack, the Colony Ornament. Everything else, you've got Legendary Ornament, you've got the Denial Dance, I'll at least show the dances. Oh, well, that's all sorts of sassy. Uh, got a Sparrow, Ghost Ghost, Sparrow. Uh, you do have the Beastly Projection, kind of looks cool, a little fire dragon above your ghost. And you also have the Lucky Shot. Whatever he's doing there, I'm not entirely sure. So, those are your Prismatic Pieces for the week. Uh, we do have a new box, we have the Vanguard Dare Bundle, so if you do want to buy this when you get 10 Celestial Don't, dome shaders which is kind of chrome with a hint of blue and purple looks like you can kind of get the bluish reflection like on the shoulder random pieces and then a little bit of purple undertones that sniper rifle is so long you can get the tall tail ship so if you're just craving the ship that is like unsymmetrical this is how you can definitely straight up buy it and also an ornament for trust which gives it a bit of a fancier vibe as opposed to sometimes it's a grungy look but there's a vanguard dare bundle for 1500 silver and other than that, everything else still remains the same. If you have a prism, see, I have three prismatic facets. So I need to spend one so I can actually keep earning them. Once you get to maxed, I like to keep three in case I get to a week where there is something I really do want. And then I can at least spend three to have a chance to get it. If I lose, so be it, but at least it's best out of three. Also, if you have, you know, Everest bounty notes and you keep wanting to get bright dust, keep spending them. I have 30. I need to do like all these bounties. Bright dust purchases, we've got poultry petting. I was lucky enough to get this one, but it is, uh, you know, pet the colonel, taking care of him for Cade. You got the Awaken the War Mind. Anything with these little glowing, you know, effects to them, I always like those. Sparrow, Sparrow, Ship, Ship, Ghost, Ghost. You guys can look at those if you want. Got the Endless Loot Ornament for your ACD Zero Feedback Fence. Got your Machinist's Trove. This is for the Tractor Cannon, which I haven't actually used in a little while. And the Crimson Silver Bullet, one of the more ornate ornaments. Pretty cool. Uh, you got the Fallen Arrival, Pink Glass, Shaders, and the usual stuff here. Uh, let's go to the Tangled Shore, and we'll jump right over there. All right, Guardians, so we are here at the Spider for a quick stop in. Uh, the 540, your powerful gear, is going to be Grave Tide Summoner. This one is going to be, it looks like, as the comment from Sloan, it's probably going to be on Titan. But I will go ahead and do a solo guide on this one. They all seem to have different mechanics, so I will do this one for you guys as well. And I can honestly do videos on these. I don't want to spam you guys with, like, you know, 12 videos. Uh, but if you want to see, like, Kurg, the All-Seeing Force, if you're like, I just want to know which lost sector it is so I can jump straight to it, I could do some quick videos for you guys if you want. Just let me know in the comments below if you would find that beneficial. If not, not really required. I will still do the Gravetide Summoner, your wanted big boy bounty for the week. Uh, but other than that, you got your dailies if you need to knock out your bounties again. 
when you're picking up things to do, don't forget, you've got to do 20 bounties. I already turned in a few, so I'm four done, but you have 20 for the week. You have your clan bounties. Uh, if you guys wonder how I already have 55%, uh, I'll do a different video on bounties and explain carrying those over and stuff like that. But you can't actually carry stuff over once it's done if you're maxed out on that activity. So keep that in mind. Uh, exchanges right now, we've got 5,000 Glimmer for Dusk Shards. We've got Alcane Dust for one Legendary. If you're missing any of these things, blow some Glimmer. Especially, like, you max out on Glimmer. He's the one place to do it. Spin some Glimmer. I usually blow enough Glimmer to where I'm down to, like, 50,000 because I don't seem to need to spend that much. And I tend to earn it back as much as I've been playing. So, up to you guys, but I would advise always buying your uh, Legendary Shard of the day just to slowly build those up. Finally, let's go to the Dreaming City and see what insanity has happened over there. Spoiler warning. Coming up for the Dreaming City Week 3 in 3, 2, 1. Okay, if you're still in the video, you are here. So you can see, um, I don't know how better to say it, but stuff has hit the fan. So, Taken Balls are everywhere. The Taken Essence seems to literally be coming out of the ground. And we've got a lot of stuff going on. But Petra is actually over in Ray Sylvia, so I'm going to drive over there. So let's warp right over there real quick and see what she's got for us to do. All right, Guardians, we are over here in Ray Sylvia. She's a little hard to get to. I'm sure you'll find her. But if you go from the Davillion Mist through the tunnel and you pop out, like, over there, just kind of walk around this little area, jump across to these rocks, and you can't quite make it up here, so jump in that tunnel, and then here she is. So let's see what Petra has for the week. Okay, so something is apparently going on. She is ready to crush it. I've received some concerning intel from a Corsair on the front. I need your eyes on this. We can't afford any surprises. Not when we're this close. Tell me, cousin, since we arrived here, have your dreams become more vivid? So, yeah, apparently this take-in is all over the place. We have a new quest called Dark Monastery. I can definitely post up a playthrough of that if you like. We also have your War for the Dreaming City. Um, daily bounties completed. Ascendant Challenge. Uh, we'll do a separate video for that as well. You guys seem to like that one last week. And then good old Blind Welfare or Offering to the Oracle for your Purification Ritual. Uh, daily bounties. Make sure you guys pick those up so you guys can check off the Dreaming City bounty. Get your powerful gear. And other than that, um, we're going to have to see what these other pieces are like. Whether the new mission, I've heard something else is out there, which I actually don't even want to spoil for you guys until I jump into it. I don't even know if it's soloable, but of course I'll try. I'm sure Esoteric, shout out to that guy. Beast mode, uh, we'll probably do it before I even try it. So, that will pretty much wrap up the weekly reset for you guys. You have a lot of powerful gear. Don't forget about your you know, weekly bounties. You're going to have... Gambit has a weekly bounty. Don't forget about that one. Uh, you've also got Petra's Weekly Bounties, you've got the 540 Bounty, and just things to pick up. If you're going to go run strikes, go grab Zavala's Bounties. Always good to get those tokens, just keep trying to get extra stuff from there. And enjoy your grind, guys, and thank you again. Still blown away. Can't believe I broke 10,000 and just blew the doors off of it. So thank you all very much. Have yourselves an awesome week. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you got questions. You can follow me on Twitch or Twitter, but right here on YouTube. If you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and I will keep the good stuff coming to you. So thank you very much. Have an amazing week, and I will get more videos to you as I finish them. So have a good one. I'll see you soon.